Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for yet another Sea Stars 50 video. Now, the first tutorial that I made was released in December of 2023, and a lot has changed in the Sea Stars 50 firmware and software since then. And so, in this video, we're going to go through some of the old tips and tricks that still work, as well as some new tips and tricks, and we're also going to check out some of the new features, including the long awaited mosaic mode in this video. So, let's go ahead and get right to it. One of the first things that you do as soon as you get your C Star S50 turned on is you're going to want to do the leveling process. The reason you're going to want to level it is that if you don't level it, the tracking for objects like the sun or for planets is going to be off because it's not going to be able to properly plate solve and calculate at which angle it's at. So it won't be able to track correctly. So that's the first thing that you're going to want to do. In order to do that, we're going to go to our settings for the C Star. We're going to go to advanced feature and we're going to hit adjust level here and as you can see it's definitely off level and to fix that it's quite easy just go ahead and rotate these around until it's in the green and since we're only doing solar mode it doesn't really have to be perfect just as long as you get that circle green you don't want it above 0.5 generally i have it at 0.4 so that should be good enough and we're going to hit finish adjusting here the next thing you're going to want to do, of course, is the compass calibration. Otherwise, it won't be able to locate the sun correctly. And even if it can't locate the sun, there's always a manual way to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But to calibrate the compass, just go ahead and hit calibrate like that. And you're just going to rotate your seed star around just like this until the green circle here in the center of your screen is completely filled out. And as you can see, the calibration for the compass is complete. So we're going to want to go back to leveling, make sure that it's still level at this new angle. As you can see, it's slightly off, so we're just going to level it again. And as you can see, now my C star is fairly level. The next step you have to do for solar is you're going to hit finish adjusting. You're going to back out of here. I'm not sure if any of you can recall, but on the previous version of the C star app, in order for you to even be able to open the arm of the C star, you had to go into gazing mode and then go up and then leave that mode and then put the filter on. It's a lot easier now. All you have to do is hit open arm just like that. And it will automatically open up the C star arm so you can install your solar filter. As you can see, the C star arm is now open. It's not too far up, so it's not going to get damaged by the sunlight. And we can go ahead and install this solar filter. And once it's installed, again, another new thing that you'll notice is that they no longer have a solar mode, so to speak. Now, in order to find the sun, you go to solar system, you click on the sun itself and hit go gazing and it should automatically locate the sun. Usually it pops up with a prompt, as you can see, just like that. And you can go ahead and hit installed and shooting. Then it will automatically find the sun. I have noticed that even after the compass is calibrated, it will still go the wrong direction. So we're also going to figure out a way to locate the sun without the actual C star go to function. And as you can see, even though it's not even done, it's already failed to locate the sun. It's pointing that way, but the sun is that way. So we're going to go ahead and figure out how to find the sun in a very easy way. Super easy step. And I'm going to explain it to you right now. Now, finding the sun manually is actually a very simple process. And to do that, all you have to do is point your C star in the general direction of the sun. And all you need is the shadow of your C star and a piece of paper or your hand. And using this piece of paper or your hand, what you're going to want to do is if you look in between your C star, you'll see that the lens in the body is slightly detached. So there's a slight gap going through there. And the way that you can figure out if your C star is actually aligned with the sun or not is that when you hold up that piece of paper, the sunlight should come so perfectly through that slot of light that it will make a direct white line coming down that piece of paper or coming down your hand. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. It's very simple. You just go ahead and move around your C star lens until you see that white strip of light appear. Currently just waiting for a cloud to pass by, but I'll get that lined up in just a second and show you exactly what it's supposed to look like. Now 
There we go. As you see, there's a little white line coming through the body of the sea star and it's landing directly on my hand. I'm sure you can barely see it, but it is there. It's just going to be a little sliver. You want to get that sliver as perfectly linear as possible. And once it's perfectly linear, that's how you know that you have it centered. And then you can simply just go up and down with your C star until you see the sun appear on your screen. And there it is. There's the sun. It was just that easy. That's all you have to do. And once you have the sun centered in your C star app, you don't want to lose it. So you're going to press this little button here. This will keep the sun properly centered in the middle of your screen. So you can either take pictures of it, do a time lapse of it, uh, record a video of it, uh, and you can record that in raw format. If you record that in raw format, that'll allow you to stack it. If you don't record that in raw format, it's just going to be just a normal video uh, limiting your ability to do any kind of editing on it. Now, if you want to get more detail on, say, sunspots, what you're going to want to do is put this into 2x zoom. And you're going to want to automatically center it again. The reason you want to put it in either 2x zoom or 4x zoom is because if you don't, you won't get as high of a resolution image of the sunspots. What I've noticed is that if you have it in 1x resolution and you go to do the raw video stacking, you won't get as clear of a photo of the sunspots as you would with the 1x. Same goes to say with the 4x. If you do it in 4x, obviously you'll get a higher resolution image than you would with the 2x. Point is, if you want the highest resolution, highest detail image of the sun up close as possible, you're going to want to have it in either 2x or 4x, unless you want the full image of the sun. Obviously, if you want the most surface detail, you need to record it in 2x or 4x. And when you record it, switch it to video, turn raw mode on. Obviously, this is going to take up a lot more storage, so you're going to want to make sure that you have enough storage space on your C-Star. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the amount of video that you would want. And obviously, just to record it, you go ahead and press this record button to start getting that raw data in. And it can record up to 10 minutes of raw data. And once you're done recording, if you want to start doing the stacking, all you have to do here is close out of that. You want to go to My Album. You want to go to C-Star. Click on that video twice and you're going to hit the stack button which is the top right corner of the screen and it's going to start stacking the video. Sometimes this can take up to 20 minutes uh, just depending on how long the video is. Of course, the less frames it has to stack, the less time it's going to take. So if you're planning on doing the stacking, keep in mind it cannot stack and record at the same time. So if you're going to stack it, make sure you do it when you have plenty of free time and are not trying to image something else. Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit now about the brand new Sea Star Mosaic mode as well as the Astro mode. What are some tips on how to use that to make it work the best? And for the Mosaic mode, how do you even use it in the first place? Well, first, let's talk a little bit about the actual Astro mode. What are the best times to image using the Astro mode to avoid the majority of the field rotation? Well, there's kind of a rule of thumb with that. In order for you to see the most ideal times for imaging, you're going to want to go to the stargazing mode. In the stargazing mode, you can click on your favorite deep sky object, for example, the Andromeda Galaxy, and down below you'll see the visibility chart. What you're going to want to pay attention to here in the visibility chart is that when you're imaging, it doesn't reach that peak point there on the chart. That peak point right there is when you're going to see the most amount of field rotation because that's when it's passing what is known as the zenith. The zenith is the highest point in the sky that the deep sky object is going to reach. And you'll notice that as it passes that point, at first the deep sky object will look like this. But as it continues to pass through and it rotates, you're going to start seeing a lot of field rotation, which is going to greatly reduce the field of view of your image and highly affect your ability to post-process it later on. Of course, if you want to just use the Sea Star for just normal imaging, you don't want to actually do any post-processing or things like that. You don't have to worry about it that much, but it's something that you definitely want to keep in mind if you're planning on doing actual astrophotography for deep sky processing with the Sea Star S50. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is the actual location of the deep sky object in your night sky. For example, the Andromeda Galaxy is in the eastern side of the sky, meaning that it's not going to see a lot of field rotation until it actually does reach the zenith, 
where it will do a complete flip and then continue going down. So if you're actually imaging for post-processing on the Andromeda Galaxy or objects that are more in the eastern direction, what's recommended is that you begin imaging early on in the night, stop imaging about 10 minutes before the target reaches Zenith, and then you can start imaging again about 10 minutes after it reaches the Zenith. This will avoid the greatest amount of field rotation and will act as sort of a meridian flip. However, objects that are more in the northern side of the sky and the southern side of the sky are going to see more field rotation in general. However, you can still avoid the majority of field rotation by bringing your sea star out here every night and again, not allowing the sea star to image as it passes the zenith. Now, let's try out the mosaic mode. How does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. Obviously, you just go gazing. Finding object. It's going to locate the object. By the way, while it's doing the go-to, it's automatically going to do a horizontal calibration. Now, the purpose of the horizontal calibration is that if your sea star is not perfectly level, it will use a three-point star alignment system to make sure that it's still able to track completely accurately without your deep sky object slowly drifting away in the night sky. Finding object. It's very important that after it does the horizontal calibration, you do not move your sea star at all. If you move your sea star at all, you will end up messing up that horizontal calibration and your deep sky object could, as again, as I mentioned, drift okay, off away out of your field of view. Now, for all of you that don't know what the actual image enhancing is, that is simply it taking its dark frames so that it can reduce any kind of dark noise in your images, allowing for a much more enjoyable EAA experience. So again, it's very important that you allow it to do this. I would definitely recommend that if you are going to do the image enhancing, make sure that you have the dew heater turned on about 10 minutes prior so that the sensor can get to a stable temperature, eliminating the need to retake those dark frames. Now, how do you actually use the mosaic mode? Well, to do that, you're going to click on these three little dots here at the top right hand side of the screen, and you're going to turn on, on star mosaic. It might bring up a mosaic mode tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do it. So you don't have to do all of that reading. To do the star mosaic, you go back to the sky atlas. You click the framing button, which is at the top middle side of the screen. And then you can simply expand that. And if you want, you can rotate it just like so. But I'm going to keep it the same because that will reduce the amount of exposure time needed. But as you can see, this is the total size of the image that I would like to get. This is the Andromeda galaxy and you can hit go to for it to start Finding taking those object. frames. I would like to be 100% clear about the mosaic mode. While it's a very cool thing object for EAA, if you're planning on trying to use start mosaic mode image. for actual astrophotography, it's not that recommended. This mosaic mode, although it seems like a really great thing, can take a really long time and a lot of people don't have the patience for that. The mosaic mode is honestly such an easy feature to use and ZWO has definitely done a really good job in bringing that out. ZWO is officially the second company to have the mosaic mode on a smart telescope. So definitely props to them for actually being able to get this pumped out there. Just for everybody to know, at the time of this video being made, the mosaic mode is currently in beta. So they're still working some tweaks out, but it is going to work the same way. As mentioned, it's an extremely simple process. You just select that deep sky object, you frame your object, and then you go ahead and press start. And that's all you have to do. You just leave it out and then allow it to start building that image. All right, so what about planets? How can you use the sea star to get the best possible image of a planet with such a short focal length? Well, sea star is definitely not made for planetary, although it can do planetary pictures. Don't expect them to be super great like you would see from a much larger telescope. The pictures are not going to be anywhere as close to being as good. Well, super easy. You go to the solar system function on the home page of the sea star app. Uh, for tonight, we're going to be looking at Saturn. So all you have to do find is hit go gazing. It will find the object. object is centered. Sometimes this can take a while, but this time it seemed like it worked very fast. Now, again, if you want to get the best possible picture of Saturn, you're going to want to switch it to video mode. Turn raw on. When, and what I like to do is make sure I have the planet centered. It should automatically put that in the center there to keep it as stable as possible. 
And then in order for me to get the most detail, which I've noticed that if you have it on one X, you're not gonna get hardly any detail of Saturn out. So what you want to do is switch it to four X or two X, whichever one you prefer. You wanna make sure you keep that centered again And you want to lower down the exposure because Saturn shouldn't look as bright as it looks here. And just like that, you can already see the rings of Saturn. It's not super bright, it's not super clear, but it's pretty good for such a short focal length telescope. So now you want to mildly adjust the focus to make sure that you have your image as sharp as possible because sometimes the autofocus can fail a little bit here. And once you're happy with how sharp that's looking, go ahead and press the record button. And you can allow that to record up to 10 minutes. It all depends on what you prefer. Personally, I don't see the need for more than 10 minutes because either way, I'm not expecting to get a super good picture of Saturn. But just allow that to record. And once it's done recording, we're gonna go back to the album. So to find that now, you go back to your C Star homepage. You click on my album. You click on C Star. You click on planetary, click on it again. And then in order to stack that picture, you go ahead and hit stack. And another good reason to use 4X zoom is you're gonna have a much, much smaller video file, meaning that this stacking process is gonna take a way shorter time. So you don't have to take as much time. Just like with solar, you'll get more detail on a smaller portion of that object and you'll be able to stack it at a much, much faster speed. Once the video is done stacking, in order for you to view the image, just go ahead and click go to check and you can zoom in right there. Obviously, as I mentioned, it's not gonna be a super great image. It's better than what you would expect from such a short focal length, but as I mentioned, it's definitely not the best. You can play around with the settings here, uh, perhaps make your image look a little bit better but it's not ever gonna look super great. So it's definitely more fun if you wanna just look at these deep sky objects, definitely as an EAA kind of thing. But for actual imaging with planetary, again, make sure that you use the 4X zoom, but don't expect to get a super great image either way. If you found any of these tips or tricks helpful, or maybe you didn't know about them before, please make sure that you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more C-Star content. As you all know, the C-Star S30 is coming out very, very soon. I believe we're going to get more details on that in November. So make sure that you stay tuned to the channel for more details about that. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really appreciate your support and I wish you all clear skies.